This is day zero of my free CCNA course. And a huge shout out to Boson Software, the official sponsor of this CCNA course. They are the reason this can be made available for free, so I highly encourage you to go check them out. They have the absolute best CCNA, CCMP, labs, and practice exams. Woo! How did I do that? Well, it's simple, right? I clicked shoot and the computer shot and that's what happened. But hold on a second though. I'm playing online and the guy I shot isn't just in the game. He's actually playing a game somewhere far away from me. How did my bullet get all the way to him? Actually, come here with me real quick. Come here. So that bullet has to fly over this ethernet cable all the way down here. Come on, let's go down here. It goes into my wall jack here. Come on, let's go. It goes into my IDF to my network stuff here in my rack. Comes through my walls, to my switch, to my router and firewall, then to my modem. And where does that go? Come on, come on. Goes to my AT&T fiber box and then to the internet. Okay, the internet. You probably saw that coming, right? Like, duh, Chuck, we play online on the internet when we play Call of Duty with other people. But what happens after that? When I fire that bullet, where else does it go? I've already shown you how it goes through your entire network. This is what you have right now. If you're playing Call of Duty online, this is your local area network. But what happens when we go outside your home to the WAN or the wide area network? Let's see. And the internet will just be more routers, just someone else's routers. Hip hopping across great distances. And that's all the internet really is. Just a bunch of routers connected. But of course, it's not just routers. You'll have switches here, firewalls, just all kinds of stuff in all these different networks. But the cool thing is, is that in the blink of an eye, as fast as you can fire a bullet in Call of Duty, that's how fast things are going across all these routers. Until finally your bullet flies all the way to the Call of Duty servers. But hold on, not finally, not yet. Because your bullet has made it to Call of Duty, but now Call of Duty has to send your bullet to the guy who's about to get shot. So, again, we go back up to the internet. Bam, back to the router. And this could be another path, hopping from router to router to router until it finally arrives at my brother's house <laughs> because he is the one I shot and it will hit his modem, his router, his switch, travel through his ethernet cable to his PS4 and he gets shot. Crap! Now, why did I show you this? Why, why would I show you how a bullet can travel across the internet? Well, I did it as a test. What I'm hoping is that if you saw this, you would go, wow, I want to know more about how that works. I want to do something like that. If that was you, this course is for you. The CCNA is for you. Because what I just showed you is what you'll be learning in the CCNA. Networking, how networks work. Now, if you look at this, the networking we have now is pretty complex. But the goal is the same as it was 20, 30, 40 years ago. I want my computer to talk to another computer. I want to share data with that computer. I want to hang out. That's, that's all we want to do. And that's how networks came about. It was one computer saying, hey, I have all this data I want to share with another computer. And I can't do that right now without a lot of effort. So you know what? Let's uh, figure out a way to connect ourselves. And that's where networking was born. We can still do this, by the way. You can use an Ethernet crossover cable just to connect two computers together. But Mark, he wanted to talk too. Mark over here was left out in the cold. Oh, hi, Mark. So in comes switches. Now, switch will allow us to connect more than one computer together. Doesn't have to be a computer, it can be a printer. Oh, and by the way, just so you know, I'm glossing over this. There's a lot more involved. Broadcast domains, MAC addresses, VLANs, all kinds of stuff with switching. So just know this is just the tip of the iceberg. But if you like this, you'll like the other stuff too. Now, this is a network and a switch facilitates that. All these computers are connected together. They're inter-networked together and they are having a blast talking to each other, playing games, whatever. Now, a switch can only handle so much before there are too many computers talking, too many things talking all at once. And he's like, I can't, I can't do this. So what do we do? Well, we get another switch. Easy enough, right? So easy. And we connect more computers and they have a blast. They're having a good time. Yes. And yes, the more computers I draw, the worse they get. <laughs> you probably can't even tell they're computers anymore. Well, I should probably label my switches, right? Let's just call them switches so you know what's going on. Now, what we have here is essentially two networks. Let's just call this network one and network two. Uh, we got a problem, though. What if Bob over here wants to play a game with Mark, but they're not connected together? How do we solve that problem? Well, that's where routers come in. Routers. I'm not going to draw one. I'm just going to bring one in. A router will help these two networks talk. That's what routers do. They help networks talk to each other. So we connect our switch up to our router. 
bam, bam. And a high level view, extremely high level view of how this might work is Bob's like, hey, I wanna talk to Mark. So he says, Mark, are you here? And everyone's like, no, Mark's not here. So Bob's like, huh, well maybe he's over here. So he goes to the router and says, hey router, is Mark anywhere? Do you know about Mark? And the router's like, yeah, I think I might know where he is. Bam, hey, Mark is over here. And now Mark and Bob can talk to each other. So where does the internet come in? Well, this might be just one section of the internet. So we'll put them down here and we might have another router with another situation. And by situation, I mean another switch with a bunch of computers who just wanna hang out with people and talk and play games. And we connect these two routers together. And the internet is just this times a thousand. Now, again, I've gotta say this. If you were to pop the hood on the internet and look inside, it's pretty complex. Like there's a lot of stuff going on. So keep in mind what I'm saying here is very high level, but that should be exciting to you. Like, wow, I can't wait to learn more about how all this works. And we'll definitely cover that. Okay, so we looked at our switch and we looked at our router. What about this guy? What's a firewall doing? Well, simply, he's protecting you. He's protecting your network. Now, as you may know, there are some bad people out there, some bad dudes that wanna attack your network, that wanna steal your information. These hackers are constantly trying to find ways to steal your stuff. And while they'll try to get into your network, a good firewall will keep them out. Now, again, with networking, routers and switches, we wanna connect people, connect computers, connect devices, smart phones and smart lights and all kinds of stuff. And that's normally good, but then there's bad things. And that's where a firewall comes in. A firewall's job is to block anything that shouldn't come through or go out and only allow the good stuff. Now I'm hoping at this point, some of you are probably going, well, Chuck, I don't connect anything to a switch in my house. There's no cables anywhere. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, you're right. For the most part, most of the things we use in our networks have no cables. And that's why part of the CCNA, you'll learn about wireless. But where does it come in? Well, here's how you would do it. Let's take Cameron's network, for example. I know that he has what's called a wireless access point, often referred to as a WAP. And this device is designed to broadcast the network over airwaves, airwaves that your phone can connect to. Now, again, many of you in your home networks probably have one device that has a access point, modem, firewall, router, and switch in one device, which is pretty amazing, which might cause you to wonder, well, why does Chuck and his brother have separate devices for all these functions? Well, first of all, we're geeks. <laughs> uh, second, we, we do that because we are network engineers. And this is what you'll see when you walk into a company because a company, they won't have one device that does all this. Companies will typically have a lot more people, a lot more things on their networks. So they'll need bigger switches, bigger firewalls, bigger routers, more access points. So they just need more and they need more features. If you're curious about what I have in my home network and what my brother has, I've got links below. Now again, this will be a free CCNA course. CCNA being the Cisco Certified Network Associate. It is one of and probably the main IT certification you'll want to get on your path to becoming a network engineer. What's a network engineer? Well, what I just showed you, the whole Call of Duty thing, the bullet floating through space and, go, and getting to my brother across the internet. A network engineer makes all that stuff work. They design things like that. They make sure those things stay up. That's their job. And the CCNA will begin to teach you about those technologies, understand them, build them, how they work. And we looked at a few of those devices right now, switches, routers, firewalls, uh, wireless access points. Uh, we'll later look at network controllers and where servers come into play. I mean, we saw the Call of Duty server, right? But we'll look a bit deeper into, well, really what is a server and how does that affect our networks? So free, what are you getting? I gotta make sure you get your money's worth. <laughs> so I will be doing one video a week and this will be a complete course covering every topic in the CCNA. Now, a large reason I can do this for free is because of my sponsor, Boson, Boson Software. If you've watched me before, you know I talk about them a lot. They are by far the best labbing and practice exam software out there for CCNA and CCMP, no joke. And they have other stuff too, but CCNA, CCMP is what I've used them for and they're fantastic. That being said, I will be using them uh, as my lab demonstration and I will be throwing up practice exam questions throughout these videos. Now, real quick, Boson is having a sale right now, 25% off, it's their summer sale. So if you wanna get Boson, now's the time. I've got links below. Now, if you have questions, Hey, this is my first video, <laughs> just getting started. So I'll probably end up answering a lot of your questions. And you know, I've been talking about the CCNA for a very long time on my YouTube channel. So I probably have answered your question already if you look back through my videos. Otherwise, I'm here to help. Leave a comment below if you have any questions about this. It can be about, hey, how long is it gonna take to study for the CCNA? Um, will it help me get a job? Is this even worth it? I mean, I've explored that. I, I have the CCNA. I got it to become a network engineer. It served me pretty well. Well guys, that's all I got. I am stoked, like legit excited to start this course. 
I can honestly say the CCNA changed my life. Uh, I know it's changed many people's lives I've talked to. It's one of those certifications that when I put on my resume, it did open doors for me to become a network engineer. So anyways, get your coffee ready. There'll be lots of coffee in this course. Uh, we're gonna study, we're gonna lab, we're gonna practice, and we're gonna get certified. I'll catch you guys later. Okay.